Okay, welcome Slapheads. We're going to uh, make some chili here. I've got all the ingredients here set up and on the description we'll have um, everything that I am using in this pot of chili. We're going to be cooking the, the meat and everything in, in a pot and then everything's going to simmer in a slow cooker. Um, so we'll get into all the ingredients here and then we'll cut into uh, how we make everything. Okay, so first over here, we got some fresh parsley, celery, and cilantro, two bell peppers, three jalapenos. I use about 10 cloves of garlic, we like garlic, and one white sweet onion. And then for our dry ingredients, we've got uh, some garlic powder, chili powder, paprika, onion powder, uh, ground cumin, this Lipton beefy onion soup mix. I just throw about uh, one half to three quarters of one of those packets in the in the mix and uh, some unsweetened cacao Hershey's cocoa just regular black pepper and a beef bouillon cube so for the wet ingredients I use just whatever beer I've got laying around usually one 12 ounce beer Pacifico is happen to be what I've got right now some Worcestershire sauce and some honey and then uh, to your liking, whatever kind of beans or tomato kind of base products. Um, I try to usually use three or four kinds of beans just for variety. Uh, so I've got a can of uh, dark red and light red kidney beans, a set of black beans, and white kidney beans. Uh, these are all 15-ounce uh, cans, 15-and-a-half-ounce cans. And then I've got um, some stewed tomatoes that I really like, whole tomatoes, and then uh, depending on the consistency, I'll throw in one or both of these, depending on how, how much we've got in the, in the pot and how, how full the pot is. So it's kind of a great thing about chili. You can add or subtract whatever you need to do. All right, so we'll go ahead and get into how we make this. Uh, this is mainly for my kids because we make it all the time and they lose the recipe. So here it is, kids. You can look it up and make it. Uh, so it is New Year's Eve right now. Uh, the ball just dropped in New York, uh, so 2021, but we're still in the uh, past. We're 2020 here in Oklahoma, so um, I'll get into it. How I do this here, it's a little bit different than most people, so uh, we'll go ahead and edit this. Uh, we're not going to do all the choppy chops. Um, I'll show you how I do it. All right, here we are. We're back. So I have combined all of our dry ingredients here, look in the description for the measurements on all that. So we've got our garlic powder, chili powder, paprika, onion powder, cumin, the soup mix, and the uh, Hershey's cocoa, cacao, unsweetened cacao, and just regular black pepper. And then over here, we have uh, some chopped celery, uh, roughly two to three stalks, about a cup and a half, whatever. And then our one chopped onion, three chopped jalapeno peppers, and two chopped bell peppers. So what I do with these is I combine these in this little gadget right here. So this is the uh, knockoff version of the Ninja. And I actually puree these because we got some uh, texture issues with some of the family but we still get all the flavor that way so uh, what doesn't get pureed as far as the fresh veggies and everything is the garlic i'll uh, squash and, and slice this up and we'll end up cooking it with the meat and then the cilantro and the parsley here will go in last uh, after the beans and the tomatoes and all that stuff we're already in okay so um I'll uh, puree this and show you what that looks like. Mm, yum, yum, yum. Looks delicious. Mm -mm. And that's what it comes out like. All right, now that we've got our Fooderator green slop, which this is the onions, all our peppers, and celery blended up, and all our dry stuff. Uh, we're going to cook the meat, so I'm going to cook the uh, ground chuck first because this is a fattier meat, so I can just strain it, and then I'll cook the uh, Italian hot sausage, and then once these are both cooked, I'll put them back both into the pan, 
and we'll add our dry ingredients first. Let that kind of mix with the, uh, the fat of the meat so it doesn't clump up. And then I'll add the, uh, that and it'll all fuse together. So when I'm browning this meat, I'll use a little, uh, olive oil and I like to use this Irish butter. So about two tablespoons of this. Um, I don't use any salt in these recipes, uh, cause this has salt in it and a lot of the, uh, the dry goods like the soup and stuff, they already have a salt in them. So otherwise it'll just be too salty. So, all right. Um, I'll show you after this is all browned and everything. Okay. So I've got the three pounds of ground beef cooked and strained cause this was a fatter ground beef. Now we're going to go ahead and cook the spicy sausage, but we're going to put the chopped garlic and, uh, about two tablespoons of that uh, Kerrygold Irish butter in. So go ahead and saute this up and you gotta do this quick cause garlic burns really fast. So we'll go ahead and pop that in, cook this up and then we'll start adding everything up. All right, this is where we're at with this spicy sausage and the garlic, it's just about done. And we'll go ahead and add everything back in. All right, so we've added our ground beef back to the spicy sausage. And I'm cooking over this on a medium heat, by the way. I forgot to mention that earlier. So we're going to go ahead and add our dry here. Stir that in. It's kind of difficult one-handed. Stir that in to prevent it from clumping as much as we can because it is a lot of powder. We want to spread those flavors around. And then as soon as we got it spread around pretty good, now we'll add our gooey gooey slop slop boom and I made a little mess over there so uh, I gotta clean that up but now we'll clean this up I've got the burner off now it's really difficult to do this with one hand okay so I'll come back to this okay at this point I've got all the gooey gooey slop slop mixed in and our dry ingredients and now we can go ahead and add our 12 ounce beer and our Worcestershire sauce and honey. Now I used about a quarter of a cup of each and I know that won't pour out all the right. Come on little guy, you can do it. And I'll scrape the rest of that out with a, a second hand when I get it back. So I'm just go ahead and stir this up. And then we're gonna turn our stove back on and let this almost come to a boil and it'll reduce a little bit and all those flavors will soak right into that meat as it, as it reduces. And then once that's done, we're gonna transfer it over to the crock pot where we'll put in our beans and tomato products and as well top it off with the fresh parsley and cilantro so um while that's cooking i'll go ahead and prep these beans okay uh so this uh got up to a boil reduced pretty well it's still a little bit moist but that's good and it is now officially new year so happy new year 2021 rock and roll so what we're going to do here with this uh, we're going to transfer this over to the crock pot and I've prepped all the beans. So I've got the light red kidney beans, dark red kidney beans, black beans, and then white kidney beans. So uh, I took them all out of the cans and strained them in the colander or strainer, depending on where the hell you're from, uh, to get all that whatever they're packed in off. So they're nice and clean and uh, ready to go in. Um, normally I like to use uh, dry beans, but uh, I didn't feel like waiting, so I went with the uh, canned option instead. So, I also have my uh, tomatoes prepped here. I've got these over here in case uh, uh, you know I need to add to for uh, either uh, paste, you can add if it's too wet, I guess you could say. 
Um, that'll thicken it up a little bit. And then if I need more room in there, because I try to fill this thing pretty much to the brim. Uh, you know, I got like 18 kids. So uh, this, this feeds them for a day or two. Uh, so I got the whole tomatoes, stewed tomatoes, and the diced tomatoes. So what I like to do with these is the whole tomatoes, I'll take them over here and squeeze them and smush them into the chili as I'm doing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer the meat and uh, put the beans in, stir them up, and then we'll start adding tomatoes. And then after that, we'll chop this up and put that in last. All right, so we've got the meat and all the beans added. Now this is a lot of beans. Uh, I put that in there for a filler. Uh, the, those beans will soak up all that flavor. The longer you cook this, the better it's gonna get. Uh, you don't have to use as many beans, that's your discretion, as well as tomatoes. I mean, you can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of chili. So, um, but I prefer to use a lot of beans because, like I said, I've got a lot of kids and this is the easy way to feed them. And, uh, you know, the government knows I have them, so I've got to feed them. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, putting tomatoes in because, see, this is already a little bit dry. And these tomatoes, I'll just put them in right in here with the sauce. Boom. And then these stewed tomatoes here with the sauce. Boom. And then we'll go ahead and stir that up. And then I'll put these, uh, these bad boys in, these whole tomatoes. And now what I do with these is I'll actually put them in my hands and just squish them in there so they're all and i'll actually squeeze these up too uh these stewed tomatoes too um so i'll go ahead and do that and then show you what it looks like all right here we are so we've got our parsley and cilantro chopped up and everything else is added here all our tomatoes and everything was smushed up by hand pretty much there's one i kind of missed when you're doing this if you're going to get in here you know make sure you wash your hands obviously uh, so let's go ahead and add this let's see if we can get the rest of this here okay and then when you're stirring this you want to be uh kind of gentle with it because those beans can be smushed very easily Spread it around. Oh my God, it smells amazing already. So I didn't think I needed either one of these uh, for a filler or whatever. There's plenty in here. I could throw that extra can of diced tomatoes in here, uh, but I don't really see the need for it. We're not making spaghetti, right? So you don't want to have too much, but um, if it was, I mean, it is a little watery, but you got to understand that the beans are going to soak up a lot of that too. So, and a lot of it will evaporate off as it's cooking. Okay, so we're going to let this simmer. It's now, uh, I don't know, probably about 1230. Uh, uh, well, midnight 23. So um, we'll let this simmer for about eight hours on low heat. Boom. And then... Um, We'll come back in the morning and uh, try it out. I like to put a little cheese on it with um, sour cream, maybe some jalapenos. Okay, we'll see you in the morning. All right, well, before we retire for the evening and go upstairs, just wanna make sure, first off, you should be cleaning as you go. Um, I wanted to make sure the kitchen was clean, getting ready to start the dishwasher there, and, uh, you know, make sure the floor is clean. And the whole house, uh, so when the wife wakes up, it's not Operation Ape shit out here. So, um, boom. And the rest of the house looks picked up. Should be good. Okay. Okay, what time is it? It is almost 7. 10 to 7. And our chili is bomb. This crock pot cooks really, really fast, even though it, I've got it on keep warm right now. And this, this sucker is still like boiling. I wish this thing had smell-o-vision because it smells so good. Mm. All those flavors are now absorbed into those beans so good and I've already scooped out some and put some cheese sour cream 
Bam Jam, and some rice from the old rice cooker. And that's it. You can put this on chili dogs, chili burgers, uh, rice, whatever. It's good.